Hi guys, welcome to today's lesson. So today we're going to be looking at circles and angles, right? So we're still under Euclidean geometry, or if you like, they normally call it circle geometry as well, right? So we're still talking about that. But now we started with looking at circles and lines and looked at what exactly is it that is a relationship between the lines in a circle. Now we're going to look at what is the relationship between the angles now in a circle, right? So that's what we're going to try and talk about. So let's just jump right into it. So remember our uh, mind map or our concept map is we've looked at the concept of a radius and the concept of a chord, right? A tangent we're gonna look at at a later stage. And then we also looked at the concept of perpendicular lines, right? So now we're looking at the concept of angles and you're gonna try and talk about an angle, maybe at the center, same segment, an alternate segment. Now, have you ever thought about, remember we're still looking at how do I construct a right angle using only a compass, a ruler, and a pencil? But to do that, we're gonna talk about an investigation. Remember the concept of a chord is from one point of the circle of the circumference to the other point of the circumference. And then in terms of a segment, this chord that I have here, right? Let me use a different color so you can see. So this chord that I have here, it normally cuts this into two segments, which is this segment that I have here, right? And uh, this other segment on this side, this segment here. So the chord normally cuts the circle into two segments, but we're gonna look at that at a later stage in the very same lesson. So part of a circle is, we have what you call a semicircle. Remember semi means half. So half a circle, we normally find half a circle because of a diameter, right? So remember a diameter, one of the definitions of a diameter is, yes, it is twice the radius of the circle, but the actual diameter is, it is a line that cuts the circle into two equal parts or into two halves, right? And those halves, we then call them semi-circles. We don't really call them a half circle, no. It's a semi-circle. Now, we a chord, as I just said, it normally cuts the circle into two segments. Segment one and segment two, or vice versa, segment two and segment one. But now we have specific words or names that we give these segments. The smaller one, we call it the minor segment, and the bigger one, we normally call it the major segment. So if maybe I try and draw another one here, if I draw it like this, this will be the minor segment and this one will be the major segment, right? So that's what we are talking about, minor and major. That's what you need to please need to think about. At a later stage, you will see why these segments are all important. Because we're gonna be talking about angles in the same segment. What exactly does that mean? It means they're on the same circumference on one side of the segment based on the chord. And this is where also you will be thinking about what I said last time that at times when I give you a chord, I won't give you the actual line. I will just give you points on the circumference, right? Which would then depict a chord. We have what you call a sector. You know, it's a part of the, the, uh, the circumference of the circle. Also an arc will be the, so an arc will be also a, a curvy part on the circumference it's as well. Subtend actually means form, right? So if I have something like this, and I have A, B, and C, the angle at B, we say it is subtended by A, C, right? Meaning it is formed by A, C. So if I say it's angle A, B, C like this, it means that this point and that point are what subtends this angle here or 
sometimes we write the angle like this with that sign there. Also, it means the same thing that A and C subtend the angle at A. So you please need to note that. Now, remember a sector will be this area that I have here of the circle. And then you still remember what radius is about from the center to the circumference of the circle, right? Then the arc, right? So the chord will be this one here. That's a chord. But now the minor segment, right? The circumference part of the minor segment, we then call it an arc. I think at some point when you guys were doing constructions, then they said to draw an arc and you would do something like this, right? That's what an arc is about. Arc will be like a line, but a line that is curving, not a straight line as we normally say. And then a major arc and a minor arc, that's what we normally talk about as well. Remember, major, bigger one, minor, smaller one. But now, also we have what we call the angle at the center. The angle at the center will be the angle that is formed by the minor uh, arc or formed by the, in the uh, minor segment. And then we have the angle at the circumference which is the one that is in the major arc or the major segment. But now look at what is happening. They are both formed or subtended by the very same arc that I have here, right? So from the arc to the center, from the arc to the circumference, right? That's the condition. And you will see why this is important at a later stage. The investigation we have is when two points on an arc subtend an angle at the center and an angle at the, at the circle or circumference, is there a relationship between these? So I said when I started, we're going to try and look at the relationship between angles in a circle, right? So if from my arc to the center, from my arc to the circumference, same points, what is the relationship of those two angles that I have there? Is there even a relationship for that matter? That's what we're going to be trying to do. And remember, we're going to be using an investigation. I'm going to be showing it with my pen, but you can try and find this at a later stage and move it as the instructions are going to be saying to you to try and do that. Now, you can see that here, if this angle is 105 and that angle is 52, there is really no relationship between the two at the moment. You will then move the point B along the circle until it gets closer to point A and then back to, towards C, right? While moving this, I want you to pay attention to AOC and ABC. AOC will be this angle here, and ABC will be that angle there. So they said, move B along the circle until it gets close to point A, right? So you move this until it gets to point A here, and then you move it to C as well. So what that means is, um, move A closer to C, then move point B along the circle until it gets closer to A, and then back towards C. Still pay attention to those angles. This will look something like this. So you can see now, I kind of now have this angle being twice that angle, right? 36 times 2 is 72. So look at that and try and see exactly what is the point there. If I move this point here, right, so I move this point that side and also move it that side and try and look at what is the relationship that you are getting with that angle um, AOC and the angle ABC. Also, move point A away from C closer to B. While moving it, observe the very same things that we are talking about. 
So let me just erase on this thing so I can show you. So here they're saying move A away from C closer to point B, right? You move A f away from C but closer to be that side. So if I then put it to be here, my point A, and I have that angle there, and I have this angle there, what will be the relationship of this angle here with that angle? Will it still have this same relationship that we are seeing right now where one is half of the other? That's what you need to try and figure out with that. Also, if you look at moving those points again, another way of looking at this will be if I have this angle here, right, and that angle there. They also seem to have a one is to two relationship or two is to one relationship. You need to think about that as well. What exactly does it mean? What happens when I move the points around? Uh, when I move the point C that way, what happens to this angle here? And what happens to that angle there? That's what you need to think about. If I move this one that side, what happens to this angle here? And what happens to that angle there? That's what I want you guys to please be thinking about when trying to solve this. So make sure that you try this investigation. Move those points around. Try them and look at what exactly is it that it will do for you. What do you observe? What do you see? And what conclusion can you then draw? Can this lead us to a theorem? We will then see after the ad break. Let's just go quickly to an ad break and I'll be back with some more. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. 